Welcome back to Fight a Fork. Today we're going to be cooking some Japanese food. In case you didn't actually know, my favourite food, my favourite cuisine is Japanese food. I uh, don't know a lot about Japanese culture. Um, very blurry genitals from what I can tell on the internet. But that's about it. Um, what I do know is what good Japanese food tastes like. If you ask my wife what I want on any given day, it is Japanese food. Any time of the day, any time of the year, it doesn't matter. I just love it. I don't cook enough of it. So, today, one of the things that I judge a Japanese restaurant by is two things. The teriyaki, teriyaki beef. Teriyaki chicken is, is an okay judge. Teriyaki beef is very hard to nail. I've done another video on that. Um, the other one is karage chicken. The karage is, um, is a really easy dish to master um, if you do the right things, but it's also widely screwed up. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to do it. Oh, that cup's a little bit dirty. I'm going to get my stuff and then clean this cup and then I'll be with you. Wouldn't call it an essential part, but a valuable part is a colonial. Pale. Jesus, is a good beer. Okay, so what I've got here is, so, hey, go away Fred, go away. I'm usually a big proponent of skin on chicken. Uh, we're gonna deep fry this, so it doesn't need to be. In fact, it shouldn't be. Um, so I've got some chicken thighs from the local Denmark butcher. And I'm gonna cut these up into roughly sort of one inch by one inch pieces. Chicken fat is definitely going to, going to go to this dog. <laughs> but I never feed him off the table. I never feed him while I'm cooking, because otherwise he becomes a scab. Go on, go away. Go away. See, he's a good dog. Never stolen anything off the table. Right. One-handed open this good quality Ziploc bag. You can do it in a Tupperware or something as well, but this is what I have next to me. Also find that bags do a much better job of this next step, just because they sort of group everything in together. This is Fred's favorite thing to eat, by the way. Now, I'm gonna get my garlic, and oh, I might actually use a different knife for that. Oh, actually, I don't really need to. So what I'm gonna do, yeah, we'll, we'll need a different knife, sorry. Um, trim a bit of that, this off, this skin off, just not too much, because it's only a marinade, it's not gonna be like part of the main dish. So we just trim a bit of that off. This is actually easier with a spoon than a knife. I don't really know why I got the knife out. This is kind of stupid. But it's in my hand and it's doing it now. Oh, utensils. I'm using a microplane. Um, if you don't have a microplane, you can use a knife and get it really, really fine. Just get it as fine as you possibly can. I'm gonna put about sort of two to three teaspoon equivalents in here. Now we're going to get a cup of, well, sort of, not sort of two, two and a half, it depends on the size. So I would say two large cloves of garlic, three medium cloves, and I've got kind of a mixed bag, so I'm going to use four little ones and a normal one, you know, you get the idea. In case you're getting triggered about me using the garlic on the raw chicken board, I'm about to mix this garlic with raw chicken. It's okay. We'll all survive. 
you'll notice that I'm making quite a lot of this. That's five, five um, thighs. That's because it's not just me having it. I've actually got two Patreons who were down the road. Um, and I've camped with them before. They're really nice people. Um, I wouldn't invite just any old random people, um, even if they are from Patreon, to, to come camp. But I've actually camped with them before. They're really nice people. So Chris and Jemima are going to come by later on. Um, and they're going to have dinner with me. Um, which would be fun. Because, you know, I'm out here on my own. And the other reason is, even if I didn't have them coming, I would still make a heap of this, because if Sam found out that I was making um, karage chicken, and I didn't bring her home leftovers, she would be very, very annoyed. This is also gluten-free karage chicken. So, celiacs rejoice. Um, it's very, very easy to make karage gluten-free, because it actually has very few gluten -y ingredients. Um, Except for soy, but it's easy enough to get gluten-free soy. And it is so good for leftovers. Fried chicken, particularly karage chicken, is certainly my favourite thing to whack in a wrap with some salad the next day. Um, a bit of Japanese mayo. Honestly, it's very hard to beat. Now we're after about three tablespoons of soy sauce. Move the swirl around, dump it in the bag. And you can leave that for anywhere between two hours and overnight. Sorry, anywhere between half an hour and overnight is fine. Uh, obviously the longer you leave it, the more flavor it will have. It's about two o'clock now. We'll probably put this on at about seven, so it'll, it'll get a pretty good Pretty good seasoning. The trick with this is to get all the air out of it. Just scrunch it up there. And dump it in the fridge. I'd better show you Fred getting a bit of this. You'll see the happiest dog in the world. Up, sit, drop, roll over, good boy, sit, gentle, gentle, good boy, good boy, good gentle boy, that's a happy dog. <laughs> now I'm going to go wash everything thoroughly. Two hours later. Okay, my patrons are here, hello. <laughs> so I've had a light of fire because it's bloody freezing. I don't know, the weather down here is just not like normal weather. What do you think? Cold? Yeah, Always pack a raincoat. Always. Alright. Let's quickly light a fire. We can sit around it for a bit while it becomes cold. Let's go. A couple of tinder rolls. Chuck them on. Zippo. Give it a quick blast. These things go for like eight minutes. They're the Zippo um, fire starter things, and they are bloody good. All right, first things first, let's make some rice. Now, just before you get to this stage, if you're recording a YouTube video, make sure you plug in the microphone that's on your body. It's very, very helpful for, you know, getting the information across. Not a terrible windy mic out that doesn't pick up anything. So, we're going to add two cups of Japanese rice here. So, I'm using a sushi rice. And after that, we want to add a little bit of water in there just to give it a rinse. So, we're going to rinse some of that starch off. I'll add about three or four cups of water stir it around and then pour out that starchy water then we add in three cups of nice clean water and drop it on the heat with the lid on and that's the absorption method of doing rice so it's a one to one and a half ratio of rice to water and you can scale that up or down as much as you want so that will take about 20 to 30 minutes and it'll be ready when it tastes like cooked rice you've all tried cooked rice before 
and drop in an amount of oil that is completely dependent on your pot size. So you want to drop in enough that it's going to cover the one inch pieces of chicken. So I'm going to do three or four centimeters or an inch and a half, uh, which works out in my case to about a liter and a half of rice bran oil. Now put it on the fire and we're aiming for 180 degrees. I'm going to use a little infrared thermometer to work that out, but you can use any old thermometer except for don't use like a person one, especially not if it's a rectal one. Uh, use a meat thermometer or an infrared or something like that. Audio works better when you plug your microphone in, as it turns out. So what I've done is I've put, I've rinsed the rice there, put two cups of water in, sorry, two cups of rice in, three cups of water, chucked some rice bran oil in the camp oven on there. After I've used that rice bran oil, I won't be able to use it again because it's got chicken and stuff in it and bits and whatever, and I don't have the inclination, to, I don't have the time or the inclination to filter that good oil back out. Um, Chris just asked me a very good question, something I get asked a heap, is uh, what do I do with that oil? In the current scenario where we're on a mate's farm and it's not inundated with people, I treat it exactly like I would a number two. Dig a hole, pour it in, it goes away. Because oil is simply plant matter, it's not bad for the environment, it's not gonna seep in and damage anything, it's just rice bran oil. Um, if it was some sort of a, like, you know, damaging like a car oil, that's a completely different thing. If I was in a caravan park or something, I would take it with me um, and I would dump it at a place that would be appropriate to dump it. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm not gonna suggest different places, but probably like in your backyard or something would be do fine. If I'm at home, I dump it in my compost bin. So yeah, there you go. All right, let's get this chicken ready um, in preparation for dunking in the oil. Uh, this is corn flour, or corn starch, depending on what you want to call it. About, say a third of a cup of that. And then equal parts with an all-purpose flour. This is a gluten-free all-purpose flour. Um, as I say, this does not have to be gluten-free. It makes almost no difference to the recipe, whether it's gluten-free or not. Pre-marinated chicken get stuff absolutely everywhere. Anything like this where it's deep fried and floured, you are going to get stuff everywhere. That's why it's awesome to do it in the bush because it doesn't matter how much flour you spill. <laughs> So that rice, <laughs> I think, is done. <laughs> Shit, that's a bit early. Oh well. Uh, also, with rice, make sure you give it a good fluff up like that. Um, the end will make it be less gluggy. And that is not even close to hot enough. It's at like 75 degrees. So I've put that into the hotter part of the fire and hopefully gets up to temp quickly. All right, let's fry some chicken. It's been, I'm not gonna tell you how long, it's kind of embarrassing how long it's been to get this oil to the right temp, to 180. Um, but it's, it's, it's been some time. I overheated it and then have had to cool it down on the ground and screwing around. So I don't know how warm that rice is gonna be, but thankfully the rice is not the star of the show. The chicken is. So that's standard, that's dropped down to 155. Um, it usually drops down when you drop stuff in it. Um, and that, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So I started with this at actually 190. Uh, and you wanna kinda, you wanna keep it around the 180 mark, but it doesn't, it's not like strict. You just don't wanna, you don't put it in at like 200. That's too hot. Drop it a touch closer to the fire to combat this, um, this reduction. You getting nervous watching that? <laughs> I had a chef come up to me at a four-wheel drive show and be like, mate, I love what you do. Love everything you do. Please, please don't show people how to deep fry on a fire because people are going to die. <laughs> you are putting hot oil over something that will catch fire to that hot oil. It's very dangerous. And I was like, I appreciate that. 
I do. Put deep fried stuff on fire, it just tastes too good. Sorry. We'll lose some. Now, you want to take it out before it looks right. So these are a little bit blonde still. As the oxygen hits them, they will go darker, and that's that will be the karage you know. Try not to drop hot oil on Fred's head. Fred, go away. Before you get oil on your head. See what I mean? The colour? It's like, it comes out kind of blonde, doesn't end up blonde. All right, last little bit, let's make this into somewhat of a meal. Look, I'm not pretending this is a healthy meal, it's fried chicken and rice and like, honestly a bullshit attempt at salad. Um, which is, this is not my idea of salad. This is every Japanese restaurant I've ever been's idea of salad when you get karage chicken, which they do call the main course. <laughs> And I like it. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, look, we need something to make it somewhat look appetizing. But this is not about salad. I'm gonna do my my local Chinese restaurant, uh, China, Japanese restaurant's attempt at salad. Like that. God, it's pretty close. Actually, there's enough stuff here that I reckon we just serve that up now. Maybe I should clickbait the shit out of this title and be like, so good I could make a vegetarian eat it. <laughs> Go on. Yes. You know you want to. Oh, I'm so gonna do that. <laughs> Done. Sold. It's, which is true. A very flexitarian <laughs> <laughs> Now you're ready to see the absolute atrocity that is my gratuitous B-roll. See what you think. Mm. Worth any mate for? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I have not had this kind of Japanese chicken in so long. <laughs> yes. Mmm, <laughs> that is very good. Mm -hmm. Kind of hard for it not to be. Mm -hmm. All right. If you have a gluten-free person in your life, or a vegetarian, <laughs> or, or both. both, or both, <laughs> if you want to be a real pain in the ass. <laughs> I have a, a gluten-free vegan friend, it's okay. <laughs> That's some dead. Um, this is a really, really tasty meal. Definitely recommend you do it. Probably improve on the salad. Oh, but this, in a wrap the next day with some salad, mm. incredible. Mm. With obviously some Kewpie mayo. Yeah. Mm. Of course. Mm. This is delicious. This melts in your mouth. It does, doesn't it? Mm. All right. See the next one. That is so good. Yeah. When we used to go to Old Shanghai, we used to get teriyaki chicken as kids. That is my like, favourite Japanese restaurant. Yeah. Same. But also, like, for the last six years, I've only been able to get teriyaki tofu. And I can't even anymore when I'm supposed to be a proper gluten-free. 